Today, I wanted to introduce you to a great Fujifilm photography resource that I've been using quite a bit lately. I have become more and more enthralled with classic 35 millimeter film photography. However, the physical film itself is quite expensive, so I haven't delved into owning a film camera quite yet, even though I do believe that the images coming off of it are pretty incredible. And there's just so many different types of film stocks and each of them have their own unique looks. And I don't know, there's almost like this magic to it all. I also kind of like the concept of loading a roll of film into my camera and then just kind of being stuck with shooting whatever I loaded in there. Let's say I've loaded in some monochrome. Well, that's it. I'm stuck with black and white for the 30 or so shots that I have left to shoot. Now, modern digital cameras like my Fujifilm X-T4, they sort of lack this whimsical nature that comes with film photography. That being said, I love the idea of trying to get as close to that whimsicalness magic that film photography brings on my modern digital camera. And lucky for me, I got a Fujifilm camera and Fujifilm has these really beautiful film simulations so I can replicate classic Eterna or, well, classic Chrome, speaking of classic, or classic negative, lots of classics. Um, I can emulate some of those old film stocks on my Fujifilm. They're called film simulations and Fujifilm took the time to sort of lift and digitize those old film rolls so that you can sort of use them today. Pretty cool. Now, of course, that's neat and all, but it isn't the resource that I was referencing. What I'm referring to is called film recipes. And if you're not sure what film recipes are, essentially they are a list of settings that you can deep dive into your Fujifilm camera to allow you to mimic different film looks. Now the film recipes that I have been using are from a website called Fuji X Weekly and they also have an app which makes it super convenient. Inside the app there's just a plethora of different film recipes that people have created, let's say Provia 400, and I can click on it and it gives me kind of a settings breakdown of what I need to do in order to get this very unique film look. Of course, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this does not achieve the film look in its entirety. This is just a way to kind of get close. There's still that magic or mojo that celluloid film gives us that these digital sensors just can't quite yet, but it is still pretty fun. Okay, so I got my computer. I took some photos in downtown Gallatin, and let's go over a few of the different looks that I played around with in my Fujifilm X-T4. Some of these I like, some of these I don't like. It's really up to personal taste. There are literally tons of different ones. I think I've ended up picking like five or six different ones to go through. So yeah, let's just go ahead and go through these. This is the first one. This one is called Fuji Color Superior 1600. And if we look at the raw photo here, of course it's very bright. The sunlight was coming directly through the window. And if we look at what the film simulation was doing, the film recipe, obviously it's really lowering the shadows. It's kind of muting the colors. It's more vibrant on the raw image as well as the green. If we kind of zoom back here, look at how dark and almost like army green these leaves are as compared to if we go over to the other image, it's definitely more probably to the true color that it was in real life. So pretty cool. Here is the same profile applied to a person. This is me. My lovely mother took this photo, so thanks mom. Honestly, it's, it's pretty nice. It's maybe not the look that I would have edited this photo to be, but again, that's what kind of makes it fun. You're kind of locked into what you get. Of course, I did shoot a raw, so I could change it if I wanted to. But again, the film simulation does look pretty nice. If we go over here to these beautiful flowers that were out in downtown Gallatin, you can really see what it's doing. Now, interesting enough, I actually do really, really like the kind of muted, duller in a way, colors on this photo. Also, you can see it is adding some grain to the image that is happening in camera. I'm not adding any of that in post. Some people are gonna say that they like it because it looks cool and old and vintage. 
Uh, some people won't because it's not technically how grain would really look in a photo like this to each their own. You can turn that on or off in the settings, but I actually do really like how it graded that image. Let's move on to another one. This one was just titled Polaroid. Uh, obviously we got super lifted shadows, super washed out, that classic Polaroid. Honestly, Polaroid photos, while they're super fun, they never really look good, but they look nostalgic which is fun, it's something to be said for nostalgia. So if we go back and forth between the raw, which obviously looks way harsher, this was shot in the worst light of the day, I think it was like two o'clock. So obviously really ugly lighting. So in a way, it does kind of turn the worst lighting into usable photos. Not to say that the raw couldn't be edited to look very presentable and usable, but it does kind of give it a fun look. There's this one of this bicycle which I do actually quite like. I don't like how harsh it is in the raw photo, which of course I could fix myself, but I didn't have to. I just shot with the Polaroid film recipe that was found on Fuji X Weekly's app, and it looks pretty nice. I also found this um, old Ford truck, which was pretty epic. I do quite like what it's doing here. Now this next one is called Color Negative 400. It's definitely a more bluey film simulation, although you can see from my uh, white balance that I was definitely kicking more blue. It was just set to auto white balance with like custom color settings. So I think I pushed the blues quite a bit in the white balance settings, but even still you can tell it's kind of doing something kind of nice. I do like it. So on color negative 400, I just went through some of the settings and for this one, I increased the shadows. That's why when we look at this picture here of a napkin dispenser, just quality photography on my part, uh, you can see that it, of course, is getting a lot more contrasty. Additionally, it had me bump up how sensitive it is to color. I believe to the maximum setting, color plus four. So, of course, is why those oranges really pop, as well as those blues. It's really punching that color through, and it looks quite nice, honestly. Okay, so next we have this little picture of this Tennessee whiskey pickup truck. And uh, this is the raw, but if I go over here, this one was titled Kodachrome 2 version 2. So. Whoever are making these are updating these as they go. Some of them also are for particular cameras. So each of the Fujifilm cameras are gonna have different ways that you apply the recipes. Cause for instance, my X-T4 has more options than the X-T3 does. So this one was for the X-T4 specifically. I believe the version one was for the X-T3, X-T2 and such like that. But again, just kind of giving it this really nice look. This one is much more muted. You can see the barrel which is nice and yellow in the raw image, kind of becomes more like a muted tan color. And I actually kind of like it a lot. So this one before with the raw, after with the Kodachrome version two does look quite nice. Again, you can see those yellows really being desaturated right here and the shadows becoming quite a bit darker. Also, there is kind of a softness in a way to the film recipe, and I believe that's because it had me tone down the clarity, because if you don't know, the Fujifilm X-T4 does have a clarity setting, so you can actually tone that down if you feel like your photos are being a little over sharpened. You don't want to reduce the sharpening itself, so that's kind of neat. Before and after, again, just really nice. I do actually, I quite like the Kodachrome version too. It starts you out with the classic chrome profile in your Fujifilm camera, and then again, you just punch in the different settings, and they make it pretty clear. Um, and it does look quite nice. And of course, it wouldn't be a film simulation if we didn't look at some black and whites. Now, if you can't tell the difference between the raw and the black and white on this one, I, I don't know what to tell you. you. You might have a problem, you might need to see a doctor, but there is the uh, monochrome versus the raw. It looks really good. I especially like this one, if I zoom in here. I did kinda just barely miss the focus that I was going for, but it is, just really pleasing to look at this photo for some reason. I don't know what it is. The way that it is manipulating that curves graph inside your camera, and actually the film grain does look good. I will say that whatever the grain that Fujifilm is introducing into it in camera does look particularly nice. I think it looks nicer than grain that I would add inside of my Lightroom editor. So maybe there's something to that. But black and white, it just looks really good. This film recipe was called Dramatic Monochrome. 
So what makes the dramatic monochrome so dramatic is that it is really making that S curve into an S. It had me increase the highlights to maximum. It had me increase the shadows to maximum. And it does look really nice. If we zoom in here, you can see that grain that it's adding to the photo. Again, from the last photo, it does look really pretty. So anyways, guys, that is the cool resource that I have been enjoying a lot lately. It brings a little bit of that film charm into shooting on a digital camera. Let me know what you guys think of the film recipes, if you like it, if you don't, if you think it gets pretty dang close to film, if it's just light years off, I'm curious what you guys think about it. Again, I do like that when you shoot with the film recipes, you're just kind of stuck with what you get. Although, yes, you could just shoot JPEGs and RAW, and then you could kind of make that decision later. So if you still want to have the benefits of a modern camera where you can make those changes later, I don't know, I think that this could be really fun for say like road trips with friends. You could pick your favorite film simulation, film recipe from the massive list that's on this website or this application and just kind of make a whole weekend road trip and shoot with this, just this one film simulation or maybe two or three or whatever. It could just bring a little extra spice to your photos. So yeah, download the app Fuji X Weekly. Give them a try for yourself. Let me know if you guys enjoy the app. This is not a sponsored video. I literally just found them on Instagram. It was a suggested follow. I clicked on it. I was like, oh, what's this? Then I clicked on their website. and I was like, oh, what's this? Then I downloaded the app and boom, I was like, this thing's really awesome. Uh, those targeted Instagram ads work pretty dang well, I guess. Also, I'd super appreciate it if you guys let me know if you find any particularly cool recipes. I have tried out a handful, but of course it would take me forever to try them all. So go in there, find a cool one, and let me know in the comment section down below. All right, youtube -y things now. Please subscribe if you've made it to this point in the video, because if you made it to this point, you probably like other content I make and also like the video. I really do appreciate it. And guys, as always, I will see you whenever I make another video. Take it easy, guys.